Hi everybody. In this series of video demonstrations, we are going to talk about advanced modeling techniques. And for example, we are going to model two objects, the backrest and the seat of this white chair that you can see in the middle of the screen. And we already have partially finished model of a chair that you can see on your screen now. And let's go ahead and start with the backrest. So what we need to do next is to take a look at all reference images that are available to get better idea of what this backrest looks like and to think which modeling techniques are better to apply in order to transfer all unique features of this object into the 3D model. And in this case, the unique features of this object would be first, its nice design so that it's recognizable from the front and the second is this nice curved shape so actually when we sit on this chair we lean our back not against flat piece of wood we lean our back against this nice concave object and the third unique feature is the presence of two types of fillets first type of fillet is a small radius fillet that goes along almost any edge of this backrest except this top edge of the backrest along which goes the large radius fillet and that would be the second type of fillet. And you're probably already thinking that the best way to make an object like this would be to create editable poly and then apply mesh smooth to it. And you know what? You would not be wrong to think that because this is indeed very good technique and it will allow us to transfer all unique features of this object into the 3D model. But there is an alternative way to create an object like this this is somewhat unique, unexpected, and very interesting technique, so I would like to take this opportunity and introduce it to you because it is faster, and is easier, and it delivers very good results. Now we need to find a way to transfer the reference image into the 3D Studio Max environment so we can always see it on a background while making our 3D model. So in order to do this, we need to create a rectangular selection of the image and include our backrest into that selection. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we need to crop this image and clean it from all visual information that we don't need. And now we can save out this file and we can call it just uh, reference one so that then we can import this image into 3D Studio Max and use it as a visual reference. Now let's go back to 3D Studio Max window and we can reset the scene. Then we need to go to front view and maximize it. And we can also hide the grid because we don't really need it. Now we need to create a simple plane object. So click plane button and create this rectangular plane anywhere on your screen. And for number of length and width segments, change it to one. So now it doesn't have those extra edges in the middle of the object. And now we can apply our reference image to this object. So then if we switch to the shaded view mode, we will be able to see the reference image. So now let's open up the material editor window. And what we're going to do next is we're going to apply our reference image to the diffuse slot of the first material. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you do that, make sure you push this button, show material map in the viewport. By doing that, we will make sure that when we switch to the shaded view mode, we will actually see the texture in the viewport. So go ahead and apply this material to the plane object and switch to the shaded view mode. And now you can see that we have our plane object with the texture stretched over it. But obviously, there are some problems with the aspect ratio of a plane object and texture appears to be squished from the sides. So we need to find a way to fix that. And the way we fix that is very easy. We just need to set the size of the plane object to be the same size as our reference image. So the aspect ratio of the reference image and the aspect ratio of the plane object would be the same. So let's find out the size of the reference image in pixels first. Go ahead and open up the material editor window and pretend like you're going to change the diffuse texture for the material. And that's gonna bring up the bitmap selection window and just highlight the file name. And here at the bottom of the window, 
you can see the size of the image in pixels. In this case, the image is 286 pixels wide and 126 pixels tall. Simply memorize or write down those numbers because we are going to input them as a length and width of our plane object. So let's go ahead and close this uh, bitmap selection window. And we can also close the material editor window. Now it's time to adjust the length and the width of our plane object. But before we do this, let's change unit system to generic units because right now it's set to inches. And we don't really care about this about size of this object in inches at this point. We only care about proportions. So we only need the simple numbers. So let's go ahead and change it to generic units and click OK. And now we can input those numbers that we just memorized as a length and a width of our plane object. So just type 286 and 126. And you can see that the size of this plane object has changed. And it, it doesn't look squished anymore. And for this reference object, let's do one last thing. Let's go to top view, select this object and move it back just a little bit so that if we create any other geometry or shapes in the front view, it would not be coplanar. Now we are going to outline this backrest with a spline object. And to make task easier, because this backrest is symmetric, we only need to outline its, its right or left side and then we can mirror it to create another side and we can attach them together. Now go to command panel shapes menu and click this line button so that we can create the line object which is also an editable spline object and start from center top of the backrest and just basically do your best trying to outline it and don't worry if it goes a little off like like you can see in my example just uh, don't worry about it right now because we can always come back and edit each of those individual vertices so we're going to do it right now. Go to Edit Spline, Vertex, Submode, and select these individual vertices and just adjust the Bezier control hands. And for some vertices, you will see that the type is not set to Bezier or Bezier corner. So just click right mouse button over it and you will see this menu and change the type of the vertex to Bezier corner. And once you do that, you get access to this control hand with which you can change the curvature of this segment that is attached to this vertex. So just uh, make this shape to look nice. And again, you see this vertex has a corner type. Change it to Bezier corner or Bezier, whichever works better for you. So when you finish adjusting each of these individual vertices and you like the result, you can, uh, you can exit from editable spline sub mode and we can mirror this half of the backrest now to create another half of the backrest. So in order to do this, click this uh, mirror button and you will be prompted to choose some mirror parameters. Just set axis to X and don't forget to set that you want to mirror it as a copy. So you get a copy of the subject and then reposition it to the place where it's supposed to be. And then you can click this attach button and attach the original spline object to it. Now we need to go to vertex sub mode and weld these two top vertices together. So just here for the welding numbers, set any number greater than zero so that those two vertices will be welded and you know, when you click weld button, you see the result. Now we need to connect these two bottom vertices together. So we have, we will fill this opening of the spline object. So we do that very simple. We just click connect button being in a vertex sub mode and you choose the beginning in the 